Hey there. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can write JavaScript inside of AppSuite. And we're going to be covering concepts such as binding data, transforming data, and writing multi-line JavaScript code. Over here on the canvas, we have a table widget, and we also have a get sales query, which is a simple MongoDB query that returns a list of sales data. We are going to be making use of the query, the get sales query, and also the table widget extensively in this video. The first thing I'd like you to have in mind is that you can write JavaScript anywhere across AppSmith using the mustache syntax. And if you don't know what that is, it is an easy way of writing declarative JavaScript code in between curly braces. So you can go in to write whatever JavaScript you want and then it gets evaluated and outputted into the place you have the double curly braces. The first concept I'd like us to cover is binding data. So say for example, you have an API call or a DB query just as we have over here, and you want to use that data in a widget, such as a table widget we have over here. An easy way for you to do that is to bind the data coming from that API call or the query into the widget you want to make use of. So for example, we have the get sales query, and if I want to make use of the data coming from this query, all I have to do is to access the data property. And accessing the data property, we can see that information coming from the get sales query is now displayed on the table widget we have over here. Another common thing that you may want to do with data is to transform it. Say, for example, you want to perform some calculations on the data or you want to perform some manipulations on the shape before it is returned to the widget. Since you have the ability to write JavaScript in AppSmith, you can easily do all sorts of transformations and manipulations that you require. So for example, the get sales query returns an array of uh, objects and each object has a date property, has a product property, has a quantity and also has an ID. But I want it such that um, the array only contains objects having date and quantity and then I want the quantity to be divided by 100. To easily do that, since I have the ability to write JavaScript, I can easily map over this data and then I can return a new object that has the desired shape I want. So I can return the date and also I can return the quantity divided by 100. And we can see that in the evaluated value pane, we only have the date and the quantity showing up. And going back to the table widget, we can see that that is the same data shown here. We only have a column for the date, and we only have the other column, which indicates the quantity divided by 100. The next concept I would like to show you is assessing the state or values of other widgets. To quickly illustrate this, I'm going to bring in a text widget. And for the value of this text widget, I'm going to be reading off the properties of the table widget or the state of the table widget. So for example, I can write some JavaScript code to access the visibility of the table widget and set that to be the text property of the text widget we have over here. So say for example, I want to do that. I can access the table widget and then I can go in to read whatever property I want to read from that widget. So for example, I can access the visibility and because the table widget is set to be visible, we can see that the value of the text widget is true. If I should go in to the table widget and set the visibility to be false or I disable it, you can see that uh, the same update is shown over here on the text widget. And we can also go in to access the state of other widgets. So for example, I want to access the quantity of the item selected on the table widget. To easily do that, I can easily access the selected row state of the table widget. To show you how to do that, I can say the table, which is the name of the widget I want to access. Then I can access the selected row state. And from that state, I can easily access the quantity of the item selected on the table. Going back to the table and selecting an item from the table, we can see that um, the row I have selected, the quantity is showing up right here on the text widget. And um, selecting a different row, for example, we can see that that same update is shown over here on the text widget. And this is because whenever the state of the 
widgets we are chained to changes. Widgets who are changed to that state are re-rendered and updated whenever that state changes. And this is true across all widgets on AppSmith. The next concept I'd like to show you is performing actions in AppSmith. Say for example, we want to um, perform an action whenever the on search text change of the table widget changes. That means that whenever the search text in the search input we have over here on the table changes, we can go in to um, call any of these predefined actions we have over here. But because we have the ability to write JavaScript, we can drill down to um, perform whatever custom logic we want to be accomplished whenever that action is called. So for example, I want to show an alert whenever the search text is changed with the value that is passed to the search input. I can go down to write some JavaScript using the mustache syntax. So I can say um, show an alert and for its value, I want to grab that from the table and the search text. This means that whenever the user enters a search term inside the search input right here on the table widget, we are going to show an alert with that value. And to test this, I am going to type in hello. And we can see that we get an alert with the value I entered right here in the search input. And the same is true for manually calling um, API endpoints or DB queries. So for example, I have my get sales query. I can choose to manually call it um, by accessing the run method. And this is identical across APIs and DB queries. So for example, um, I want to call the get sales query whenever the row on the table widget is selected. So I can easily do that by um, accessing the query and invoking the run function. So what I have configured here is going to rerun the get sales query whenever a row is selected on the table. To see that in action, I am just going to go ahead to um, select an item on the table. And we can see that the query is rerun and then the table is updated. I'm just going to do that one more time so that you see it happen. And that is how you can easily access um, queries and API calls and manually invoke them by calling the run function. The next concept I'd like to show you is the ability to write multi-line JavaScript code. And this is really easy to do. You can easily do that by wrapping whatever conditional logic you have written inside of an anonymous function and then invoking the function immediately. Um, to show you how that works, I am going to wrap the get sales um, query transformation I have over here inside of a function and write some multi-line code. So I'm going to write an anonymous function and I am going to immediately invoke it. And now I can write some multi-line code. So say for example, I can store the data of my transformation inside the variable. And then afterwards, I can choose to return that data. And we can see that it works the same but now I have the ability to perform more logic or do something custom in a multi-line code format. And lastly, AppSmith also has built-in libraries that you can make use of right here within the editor. Um, to see a list of the libraries you can make use of, head over to the JS library section and you can see that we have a few libraries over here. We have the Lodash library, we have the Moments library, and we have the XML parser library. And the way you use these libraries are the same way you use them everywhere else where you write code. So for example, I would like to use the Moment library to format the date that is shown on the table widget. So I can go into use Moment like I normally would by calling Moment. and passing in the dates. And then I can go ahead to format the dates and specify a format in which I want the dates to be formatted. And we can see that the date is formatted using moment. We can see the evaluated value right here or going back to the table widget, we can see that 
right now I'm using moments to format the date into um, the format I prefer. So in this way, you can easily write JavaScript and we have seen how you can bind data, how you can transform data, how you can access the states of other widgets and their properties, how you can call actions and how to write multi-line JavaScript and then make use of the built-in libraries you have right here in the AppSmith editor. I hope you found this helpful and I'm sure you're going to take advantage of writing code inside of AppSmith.